March 9th, 1944. Dear family, all of us apprentice seamen are billeted in Northampton Hotel. The midshipmen are living in the dormitories on Smith campus. It was the first of many letters written by Jean Schwarting to loved ones in St. Louis and Mexico, Missouri during World War II. Schwarting was among tens of thousands of American women who enlisted in a newly created division of the Navy known as WAVES, women accepted for volunteer emergency service. The influx of female personnel freed up men for duty at sea. She turned 21 and graduated from college and enlisted in the Navy all in like January of 1944. Jean Schwarting's daughter, Phyllis Carlisle, explains why her mother signed up. She was in a, in a family with three daughters. And so there weren't any sons to, uh, you know, join the war efforts. And she came from a fairly patriotic, um, stoic German family. and. Her father served in World War I, but she, she just, it was that patriotism, I think, that was evident at the time. Schwarting wrote home daily for two reasons. She was not allowed to keep a diary, so she wrote the letters to maintain a connection to her family and also create her diary. Some of the letters even mention, put these pictures I send you in a drawer and save them for me when I get home. Jean Schwartig's World War II letters now have a permanent home here at the State Historical Society of Missouri in Columbia. They're part of a digital collection that includes letters from more than 3,000 enlisted men and women from across the country. Archivist and, you know, Heather Richmond. Um, they can search, you know, just any keyword they want to. And then we also have ways we have uh, metadata, uh, which is, um, makes it so that you could click on a state and every letter from that state shows up. The thing about researching an interesting topic or a compelling person is that the more you learn, the deeper you want to dig. That was certainly the case with Jean Schwarting. She and her twin sister June spent the first nine years of their lives living here in South St. Louis on the 4900 block of Botanical. They and their immediate family lived above a grocery store owned by the girl's aunt and uncle who helped to raise them. That's because Jean and June's mother died shortly after they were born. Their father, Harry Schwarting, was an engineer. He eventually remarried and fathered a third daughter, Mickey. The girls spent summers in Mexico, Missouri, where their aunt and uncle had moved and owned a farm. Jean and her twin went on to graduate from Southwest High School, then enrolled at Washington University, where they were when the U.S. entered the Second World War. And she was in college, and she decided that she was going to enlist, and the uh, recruiter talked her into waiting till she graduated from college so that she could become an officer. Schwarting graduated with a degree in business and accounting and joined other WAVE recruits at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts, where they trained at Officer Candidate School. You take all these girls that are college girls and, you know, not college girls, and you have to teach them how to become soldiers, even though they didn't, you know, serve on the front. And she actually said she enjoyed living in the dormitories because when she went to Washington University, she lived at home and commuted to school. Schwarting's day-to-day -day activities and observations of fellow waves were the primary focus of her letters home. It's still snowing. The people here in the hotel say that this is a freak snowstorm. It's very pretty and makes it really seem like New England. As we march to class, we can see a ski run on one of the hills near here. Beth got a box of cookies from her mother today, and all the girls on the deck keep dropping in to see how the cookie situation is. The situation is well in hand. Right soon. Love, Jean. She'd also make requests for things that weren't easy to come by in wartime. Please, save a shoe stamp for me for when I come home in May. I want to get some pumps for dress, but the Navy doesn't give a shoe stamp for them. They aren't essential, say the regulations, 
But if you could see me in my GI shoes and stockings, you'd know that pumps are necessary for morale. Also necessary for morale, going on leave. Beth and I say that when we go home on leave, we're going to take half hour baths, talk on the telephone, listen to the radio, eat off plates, ride in a car, because we always walk here, and sleep as long as we want to. These are the things we miss most, and we're going to be late for everything. After Schwarting's basic training, she was assigned to communications for additional instruction. Then it was on to Washington, D.C., where Ensign Schwarting coded and decoded messages and also delivered messages between the Department of the Navy and the White House. She didn't tell us much about what she did because it was so top secret. And I don't remember her talking hardly at all about her actual job until, um, oh, just a few years ago. After the war was won in Europe in 1945, the Supreme Commander of Allied Forces, Dwight D. Eisenhower, returned victorious to the nation's capital. Schwarting wrote home about his rousing welcome. It wasn't really a parade, just a welcome to the general. There was just a police escort, then the general, and then about a dozen army cars with various admirals, generals, and enlisted men in them. But it was the general who stole the show. He is wonderful. In June of 1946, Lieutenant Junior Gray Gene Schwarting was honorably discharged and returned to Missouri and civilian life for good. Over the next several decades, Schwarting was married and widowed twice, raised three children, and taught third grade. During the final chapter of her life, she gave presentations throughout the community about her military service. This student decided to write a paper on mom's experiences. And I think she had copies of the letters and so forth. Well, her professor at Truman State University saw these letters and said, oh, these should be preserved. This is a really good record, you know, first person of World War II. Jean was put in touch with the State Historical Society of Missouri, and the rest, as they say, is history. You can see this human experience happening. Just, it makes it very real. And that's, that's what I love. Um, that's what I love about these letters. Jean Schwarting Mollett Anderson died June 6, 2019, the 75th anniversary of D-Day. She was 96 years old. To her legacy, add this video interview with Jean's granddaughter-in-law, Robin Carlisle taped the year before Jean's death. Did you ever tell your students about your time in the war? I don't think so. I don't think, you know, they were so little it didn't mean a thing. And um, even their parents, if they had been, it never talked about it. But because of all she has left behind, Jean Schwarting is able to tell them now. For Living St. Louis, I'm Ruth Ezel.